Good evening to everybody. Welcome to another Lord's Day. This is the day the Lord has made, so we will rejoice and be glad in it. If you would, as you're coming in, please make sure you click that share button. Make sure you share some love today as you're coming in. Greet everybody coming in during this love day. This is Valentine's Day, so I want you to share some love today. I want you to greet everybody coming in. Let them know I love you. There is nothing you can do about it. And I want you to share this live right now. Make sure that you recognize every time I share, I invite everybody I'm connected to to be a part of what God is doing in this moment. So I too am going to share <clears throat> even now as we prepare for what God is going to do on today. We are yet praying for all of you who are going through some seasons of trouble, some seasons of trials, and we know that God is able to do anything but fail. So won't you bow with me as we go before the Lord in prayer even now. Let's pray. God, how we thank you for another day. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you've been good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. I pray, God, that for everybody under the sound of my voice, God, whatever they may stand in need of, God, I pray that, God, that you would continue to hear and answer prayer right now, God. I thank you because, God, we know you're able to do anything but fail. So by your power, by your might, God, I pray that you have your way in our life, God. I pray that you rule and super rule over our lives, God. Thank you for being the head of our life. And God, thank you, God, because we recognize that if it hadn't have been for you on our side, we would not be where we are right now. So God, I pray now for everyone under the sound of my voice, God, I pray that you would give healing where there's sickness. I pray, God, that even right now, God, that you give strength where there's weakness. I pray, God, that you continue to be the lifter of our heads right now, God. And I pray, God, for those who are watching who may be going through financial difficulties, God, I pray that you would be Jehovah Jireh, be their provider in the midst of what they're going through. I pray for restoration of marriages and relationships, God, I pray. God, in a special way, God, that you would do a new thing in us. Help us, oh God, to look up to the hills from which come with our help, knowing all of our help comes from you. I pray for those who are grieving and bereaved right now. God, wipe away inward and outward tears. And God, we pray that you would open up our hearts and minds to receive all that you have in store for us on today. And we thank you in advance for what you alone are going to do. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Again, good to see everybody come in. Thank you all for coming in. I miss Cook. Good to see you. Uh, Shalar Knight, Hollis, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Make sure y'all click the share button right now as we are preparing for what God is going to do uh, on tonight. All right. Make sure you do that uh, even right now. I am uh, engaged in a series of teaching in which we have been talking about leading like Jesus leads. And if we're going to do that, we also understand that uh, as a leader, sometimes it requires us to do some things uh, on our own behalf to to help empower ourselves to do some things to help to in, to enable us to be a better and more effective leader. So on this Valentine's Day, for those of you who are watching today, I guess uh, for all of us who are spending Valentine's night together uh, on this Bible study and those who will watch on replay today, we're going to talk about what do the lonely do? If you are here and you're watching, you might not have plans on Valentine's Day, you might say, I ain't got no Valentine, but even if that be the case or not, the question becomes, what does a leader do? What does the lonely do? Sometimes as a leader, we are responsible for doing some things on our own. Amen. In order to be an effective leader, sometimes it requires us stepping, taking a step back. And even if we're going to lead like Jesus does, we got to be prepared for some things uh, that that as relates to taking care of ourselves, sometimes it requires us to be alone for a spell. How many can testify every now and then as a leader, you got to get by yourself. And sometimes you got to learn how to encourage yourself in the midst of what you're doing, in the midst of trying to be there for other people. Sometimes you need to take time to be there for yourself. So here's what I want you to do. We're going to uh, take a look at some scriptures and some examples of how Jesus spent time alone, how importantly critical it is that we learn how to spend time alone during our time of leadership. And so as it relates to what Jesus did, uh, let's let's look at this. Let's look at the fact that when it comes to making sure you spend some personal time alone, 
Jesus, there were six times that we're going to talk about tonight in the Bible where Jesus took time to be by himself intentionally. Yeah, he spent a lot of time with the disciples. Yeah, he spent some time with Peter, James, and John. But there are also times where he specifically did some things on his own. All right. One of the times that Jesus spent time by himself was in order to prepare for major tasks. Luke chapter four, somebody put this in the chat. Luke chapter four, uh, verses one through 15, talks about how after Jesus was baptized, he spent 40 days praying in the wilderness. And after this, he was tempted by Satan and then began his public ministry. Before he began trying to help everybody else, he spent time by himself, fasting and praying for 40 days, getting closer to God. And then watch this, simultaneously as he is coming off of his fast, he then encounters uh, some time with the, with the devil. Isn't it amazing how sometimes that while it is you're trying to get closer to God, sometimes Satan will show up at the self same time. It is when I'm trying to get my relationship with God, right? That the enemy will come and try to disrupt your regularly scheduled program. And so it is that if you're going to lead like Jesus, sometimes it requires us taking a step back, fasting and praying as we are called to do, right? Fasting and praying doesn't mean you got to make public service announcements, but sometimes in our personal time, we got to spend time with God. Watch this, recognizing that as soon as you spend time with God, there's an attack from Satan coming. There's, there's going to be some time where by the time you finish with with getting your your quality time in with the Lord, that watch this, that the enemy is going to simultaneously come in and test what you have just went through. And so Jesus intentionally spent time alone before a major task. How many of us go from one thing to the next without taking some time out to spend time with God and understand that we cannot say that doing ministry is spending time with God. Let me say that again. For every ministry leader, uh, stop stop saying, oh yeah, I'm spending time with God because I'm doing ministry. No, you're helping people. Doing ministry, you're actively helping people. You're doing things for people, but it is not the equivalent of spending time with God. So you have to be intentional in spending quality time away from the crowd, away from everybody else, before you take on a major task, make sure you spend some time with God, making sure you hear his voice clearly, making sure you get his directions uh, and your perspective right. So therefore, when the enemy attacks, you are prepared for it. All right. So that's, that's, that's the first thing is Jesus spent time alone. Here it is to prepare for a major task. I don't need you going from one thing to the next. I don't need you uh, going from the monkey bars of ministry, going from one task to the next. And you have not spent time with God because now we're getting high on our own supply. Right. All right. So the second time uh, that we see Jesus spends time alone is to recharge after hard work. Jesus spends time alone to recharge after hard work. That's found in Matthew, excuse me, in Mark chapter six, verses 30 through 32. It says, and Jesus sent out the 12 disciples to do ministry. And when they returned, he encouraged them to separate from the people who were following them to rest. Listen to this. I need for you to understand at some point, as much as we like going and as much as we like staying busy, all of us need to take some time to recharge and rest. Yeah, I'm talking to you. There's there's always going to be something to do. You're always going to have a task that you have to complete that you feel like if you don't do it, nobody will. But what happens when you run yourself raggedy and there's nobody to do what you do? So you have to make up in your mind that I am going to be intentional, not just about preparing for the task, but I'm going to be intentional with getting my rest for the task. Any witnesses that can testify, we don't rest enough. Yeah, I'll sleep when I'm dead. All these things we say, and yeah, there's no rest for the weary. Yes, there is, but you got to be intentional in taking the rest. You, you got to make sure that as it relates to leading like Jesus leads, even leaders need to take time to recharge. I mean, you can't use your phone 
for long periods of time without doing what? Recharging it. So if your phone needs to be recharged, if you, you know, your, your car needs to be recharged, if all these things that we use eventually run out, what makes you think you can keep on running without getting some rest? So as a leader, self-care is the best health care. You got to make sure that you intent, you're intentional about getting your own rest. Nobody is going to say you need to rest. You got to do it on your own. In other words, people will run you raggedy and then wonder how you ran out. Many people right now, you are literally running on empty because you have decided I'm not going to rest. But as a leader, even Jesus encouraged his disciples, I'm going to send you out to do the work, but I want you to make sure that you are intentional in recharging and resting. All right. So here's another thing. Jesus took time to be alone to work through grief. Matthew chapter 14, verses 1 through 13. Matthew chapter 14, verses 1 through 13 is when Jesus has learned of his cousin, John the Baptist, has been beheaded. And this Bible says, and he went away by himself. Now, here's the thing. If Jesus, the Son of God, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, could take time out to grieve his family, to grieve the loss of a loved one, what makes you think you don't need to take time to grieve? What, what makes you think that you don't need to take time to, to handle and deal with the loss of a loved one? Some of us try to function as if we're okay, when the truth of the matter is you're not okay. And here, can I give you some freedom? It's okay not to be okay. Yeah, I'm going to say that again. Don't, don't think that you, you're less spiritual, that you don't believe in God the way you should if you're not okay when you have lost loved ones. If you are going through grief and if you're going through bereavement, here's the newsflash. Uh, you not being okay is okay. It is natural. It is your human instinct to grieve the loss of somebody who's been close to you. So Jesus even took time to be alone so that he can handle grief. You've got to be able to understand that in my, in my, in my walk with the Lord, I need to take time to be alone. Watch this. So I can properly grieve. You can't grieve around people because you don't really want them to know how bad things hurt. Sometimes you don't want to seem like you're always crying, but sometimes I got to take time away from everybody else so that I can properly grieve. And then I can return back to my normally scheduled program. So as a leader, you, you got to make sure that you take time to grieve just as Jesus did. All right. Also, Jesus took time to be alone before making important decisions. He took time to be alone before making important decisions. This is Luke chapter six, verse 12 through 13. Y'all got that? Writing it down. Luke chapter six, verse 12 through 13. Uh, it says in Jesus, uh, in Jesus's earlier part of his ministry, he spent a whole night alone in prayer. And then after he spent time alone in prayer, that's when he chose his disciples. Listen to this. How are you making major decisions and you haven't taken time to be alone with God? Yeah, you got to sometimes take some time to be alone in prayer with God uh, being able to have dialogue with you before making major decisions. How many of us can be can be honest and say we're guilty as charged of making decisions you ain't prayed about? Oh, it's going to get real quiet on a Monday night. You, you made major decisions without spending time in prayer uh, and, and then wonder why it didn't work. Many times we make decisions without God and then expect God to bless our mess. And so we got to make sure that before I make any major decisions, I'm going to spend time alone with God in prayer, right? Seeking God's help, seeking God's voice, making sure that I hear specifically from him before I make the wrong decisions before maybe we wouldn't have made some of the bad choices we made if we had spent time with God in prayer. Y'all got it? So making sure I spend time alone in prayer before I make major decisions will help me in my decision making. All right. 
Here's another time that Jesus spent time alone. It is in a time of distress. Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 44. It says, hours before Jesus was arrested, he went to the Mount of Olives and, with, and, and he went away from his disciples. And he himself was in great emotional agony. Jesus is at a place where he is literally praying until he sweats blood and water. Uh, he is at a place where he is in anguish over what is about to happen to the point he asked the Lord, his father, God, if you if it be thy will, let my let this cup pass from me. If if there's any way I can get away from doing this, please, uh, if it's not your will, then then do it. But that nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. There are some times where if we be honest, we, we got to spend time alone because you going through some stuff. And I don't know about you, but these last two years, we've been in distress. I don't care what side of this hill you're on. I don't care uh, whether what your economic status is. I don't care how spiritual you are. These last couple of years, all of us have been in distress. And so subsequently, by default, it has made us spend time alone because COVID has locked us in our house. But it is in times of distress, I need to sometimes get by myself. Listen to this. You, you ever been in a, in, a, in a moment of distress and acted out on it or, you know, somebody says the wrong thing at the wrong time and and you snap on them and all. No, sometimes in my distress, I need to take time by myself so I can get to God, so I can tell God I can release some of the pain that I'm feeling, that I can release some of the anguish that I'm feeling so that I don't engage in what's called displaced frustration. Y'all know what displaced frustration is? That's when you're frustrated about something over here, but you release it on somebody over here. Yeah, you, you're mad at the people on your job, but you snap on the people at your house. You are upset with uh, what's going on in your house, but you release it on the people at the drive through window. Am I talking to anybody today? So, so you got to make sure that in my time of distress, I need to be by myself. Sometimes you better tell people, y'all need to leave me alone because I'm not in a good place right now. And before I snap, I need you to leave me by myself. I need you to let me spend some time alone with God so I can have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about my problems. Sometimes you got to say like that old uh, prophet said, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying <laughs> not to lose my head. It's like a jungle. Sometimes it makes me wonder how. No, I, let me just stop. That that that's that's a time. There's a time where I need to be by myself. I don't need to be around people because I see any minute now I could snap on the wrong person. So in my distress, I have learned to pull away, to take some time and to be with God. And then lastly, Jesus always took time to be alone, to focus on prayer. Luke chapter five, verse 16 says many times that Jesus in his ministry, he just spent time alone in prayer and we've got to get back to a healthy prayer life. Listen to this. Uh, how, how much time do you spend on the phone each day talking to people? I'll wait. I'll wait. Many times. If you just calculate just how many hours you may spend on the phone talking to friends, loved ones, to talking to even people you don't like. You spend time talking to people every day. But when you calculate how much time you spend talking to God, it doesn't add up. Am I, am I talking to anybody? The amount of time we spend talking to people who can't do nothing to help or solve our problems, the amount of time we spend talking to people about idle conversations, yet we don't take the same or keep that same energy in talking to the Lord. We've got to get back to a place where we're intentional with our time with God, talking to him in prayer, just daily prayer. How many of us, you, you, we only pray when things are bad, when things are going wrong. But when you have regular dialogue with him, regular conversation with him, Sometimes it just means I'm just going to be intentional about my prayer time. How many of you set aside time during your busy schedule for prayer? When you make your schedule for the day, how many times have you placed God in your schedule? I'm going to take this moment 
this time to spend time in prayer with God. If I can plan everything else, if I can make meetings happen for everybody else, why can I keep that same energy and spend time alone with God? You worried about being alone on Valentine's Day. Watch this. Well, what happens when you learn or listen to this before you wait on somebody else to love you on a love day? How about you love yourself every day? Love yourself enough. Watch this. To spend some time alone with God. When it is I'm preparing for a major task, I need to spend some time alone. When it is I need to recharge after hard work, I need to get some rest and relaxation. I need to spend some time alone. When it's time for me to work through some grief and some bereavement, I need to take some time to be alone. Every leader needs to make sure before you make an important decision, you spend time alone with God before I go off and snap on people in my time of distress. I learned how to make time to be with God and listen to this. And when it's time to focus on prayer, I need to be intentional on making time with God and being in prayer. So I need you to understand sometimes you may not have the support system that you want, but you have got to learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord and recognize that every now and then I need to have some time to be alone. What do the lonely do? They pray. What do the lonely do? They they get some rest. What do the lonely do on Valentine's Day? They they spend time focusing on what God has for them to do. And I promise you that your life won't be the same if you take time to uh, take care of yourself. But listen to this. Self-care isn't selfish, but it is health care. Your self-care is the best health care. I need you to take care of yourself because your health is your wealth. Make sure that you do whatever it takes to give yourself what you need in order to succeed. Listen, if you're watching today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you don't know them, you know him as your Lord and your Savior, then today's your day. You can simply say this prayer. You can say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I confess that I'm a sinner that needs to be saved by your grace. Come into my heart. My life will never be the same. I believe that you died on the cross, rose on the third day with all power in your hands. And I accept you as my Lord and my Savior in Jesus name. Amen. If you pray this prayer, we're believing by faith that you are now a part of God's family of faith. Now, listen, if you've been blessed by this by this teaching, if you've been blessed by this ministry, I want you to take time right now. To give to this ministry, I need you to make sure that you understand when you give, you show that you are faithful over what God has given you. You are a faithful steward of what God has entrusted to you. So I want you to make sure that if you're giving today, I want you to give through Cash App. That is dollar sign, Saint, uh, excuse me, the dollar sign, the tabernacle, the letter U, the letter C. Tap, dollar sign, the tabernacle, the letter U, and the letter C. Remember, you can't be God giving no matter how you try. Thank you all for joining tonight for this Monday Night Manna. Hopefully you have gotten something out of this teaching as we lead like Jesus. Sometimes we got to get by ourselves so that we can get ourselves in the right place to do what God has for us to do. Listen, this Sunday I'll be preaching at Peace Baptist Church uh, that is uh, on 13450 Goddard Street in Detroit, Michigan at 1030 a.m., I want you to make sure if you can't meet us there, that you meet us online as well as we will be sharing the word of God there. Listen, I love you. There is nothing you can do about it. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer.